Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. In the last episode of the .NET show, I created a solution with a Maui XAML app and an ASP.NET Core server, using the gRPC client in the Maui app to access a gRPC service on the server. In that episode, I only demoed the Windows platform. In this episode, we'll pick up where we left off, modifying the solution so that we can access data from Android and iOS, as well as Windows. In the course of the show, we'll discover what's up with gRPC and Azure, and find a few kinks to straighten out as well. And that's all coming right up on the .NET Show. So we're going to pick right up where we left off last week. This is my solution, gRPC demo. And uh, let's just run it with Windows. There it is. So I've got the gRPC server that's uh, running on localhost. And I'm going to retrieve a random record from it. That worked. And I'm going to retrieve my 5,000 records in a stream. That works just the way it did last week. All right. Now let's try Android. So for that, I'm going to set gRPC demo as a startup project so I can change to an Android emulator. That's a good one. And now I'll set it back to multiple projects. And away we go. All right, let's retrieve a random record. Ooh, nothing happened. Well, I wonder if we got an exception or something. Let's put a breakpoint right here and we'll try it again. Ah, yeah, we got a message now. Error starting gRPC call. Connection refused. So diving into the docs, turns out the emulators can't access localhost. Their network is completely separated from you. So if we want to see this in Android or iOS even, we're going to have to move the server somewhere else to a public IP address. So let's talk about moving it to Azure. But first, let's try it with iOS. I'm using Mac in Cloud to do my builds. All right, here we go. Bonk. Yeah, same message. So while Windows works because that is the platform I'm running on, so it has access to the local network. The emulators and the simulators do not. So now we're up against gotcha number two. So do you remember when we added the packages, we're not using grpc.net.client.web. And it turns out we have to. So grpc web is different from grpc. grpc uses HTTP2, and although Azure App Service does support HTTP2, it doesn't support gRPC because of some of the features of HTTP2 that it uses, whatever, I'm not sure. However, Azure Web Service does support gRPC Web. gRPC Web uses HTTP 1.1. And if you saw Blazor Train where I use gRPC, that's what I use there, because in a browser, you have to use gRPC web. So let's look at the server here. How are we going to make this server use gRPC web so that we can publish it? Well, this is all fine and good right here. The packages are there. It's the program that we have to update. Now, there's quite a bit of changes here, so let's go over them. We still have Builder Services add gRPC, just as before, but now we have to use cores, cross-origin resource sharing, because we're going to be calling this server from multiple clients, and there are built-in rules about what IP addresses can access the server. So basically, we're just allowing everything. Anybody who wants to hit this server can hit it. Now, this is just for testing. By the time you guys are watching this, the server that I published is down. So I'm not worried about it. But I do want to show you this is how 
we get this working. So I added use routing and use gRPC web and use cores. Also, when we map the service, people service, I added enable gRPC web and require cores allow all, which is the policy that we created up here. Now I can publish this to Azure. And I did. So you know what? I'm going to get rid of it. Now gRPC demo is the startup project, and we can focus on the MAUI program CS. So we're no longer using localhost. Let me just update it. So yeah, Carl's gRPC server .net. That's my new URL. And this is complaining because we haven't actually added this package yet, gRPC net client web. So let's just do that. So the base address has changed and also the channel has changed. Now I have specified gRPC channel options and I've specified a new gRPC web handler with a new HTTP client handler. It's just plumbing that you have to do if you're going to use gRPC web. So that is the only change that we're doing. The code doesn't necessarily have to change because it's still calling this people client at a higher level. And this is where the plumbing of the people client is defined. So we should be able to use this. Let's go back to Windows. Random record. There it is. 5,000 records, boom. All right, so this works. So that data is now coming from that Azure service. Now let's try Android. Random record, there it is. Retrieve 5,000 records, boom, it works. All right, so remember, all I did was I published this server. Oh man, it's really slow. We'll talk about that in a second, but all I did was publish the server to an Azure service, and I didn't specify HTTP2, just HTTP1. It's a .NET 6 ASP.NET core application. That's it. That's all it is. All right, let's just get to the end of this, shall we? Yes, it's slow. We're going to talk about that. But first, let's take a look at iOS. All right, iOS, here we go. Hey, look at that. It works. All right, let's get our stream. Uh, stream? Hello, stream. Hmm. Well, turns out I found a bug in the Maui collection view, or at least we think it's a bug. I got some help from my friend Jonathan Dick at Microsoft on the Maui team. The Maui iOS collection view does not like being bound to observable collections. There, this code is stopped. It, uh, it isn't running, there's no exception. It's a collection view problem. So how are we gonna get around that? Well, we're gonna do a couple of things. First thing let's do is make the UI a little bit prettier. All right, I'm still using a collection view, but Jonathan added this uh, UI code that makes it look a little bit better. Let's go back to Android and I'll show you what I mean. See, it just looks better and it's still kind of slow. So let me show you how to get around this bug. So to prove that this is a problem with observable collection in the collection view on iOS. I'm going to change this to a list of person. Now we won't be able to see any records, but it won't hang. All right, and away we go. Got to retrieve our random record first. There it is, and now. All right, so it does the calculations, meaning that it did actually return those 5,000 records. And if we put a breakpoint here, and do it again, after they've all returned, you can see people is a list. Let's just look at people first. 
There it is. So yeah, we got people. It's just a UI problem. All right, so just to work around it, just for now, until they fix this, and they will fix it, let's update the code. Now, I gotta give props to Jonathan for this. Between he and I, we figured out a way to make this work. So he's got this buffer, which is a list of person. Let's come back to this. I wrote this code. So here's his move next, and he adds to the buffer. And it doesn't blow up in iOS. That's That was my comment from before. And he adds it to the buffer. Update the people count. And either if the people count is 20 or the people count is divisible by 100, we're going to flush the buffer. So flush buffer is this guy right here. If we're in iOS and either we've got 20 records or 5,000 records, we're going to set the whole dang thing, people, to a new observable collection from that buffer. Now, I know that's very rude to your user. They got 20 people. They see it. They go. They start working with it. And then after they got 5,000, boom, the whole collection just changes. The selected item, all of it, right? But we're just trying to work around a bug right here for now. That's all. Now, I also call on property changed if I've changed people. So you can see up here, I don't have a backing field. So I'm not automatically calling property changed every time we add a new record. That is smart because lots of UI updates, right? And then we're going to set the counter label text to loading. It's either going to be 20 or 5,000, right? So if it's not iOS, that means Android or Windows. We're going to just take all the people in the buffer and add them. Now, it would be great if Observable Collection had an add range, but it doesn't. So we just add them one at a time, and then we clear the buffer and update people. And I have to do my message here uh, because if it's not iOS, I want to use people count. If it is iOS, I want to use buffer count. Down here, I'm clearing the buffer, right? But if we're in iOS, we're just going to keep that buffer going. And if people count as 20, I'm calculating the time that it took to get those 20 people in milliseconds. So that is the difference. This is going to work on all the platforms. So let's go back to Windows. There we go. Here's a random person. Here's our 5,000 people that get streamed. And it works just like it did before, except it looks a little nicer. All right, let's try Android. Random record. 5,000 records, yep. Much faster too, right? Because we're not updating that list with every single record. All right, now the big test, iOS. All right, here we go, random record. There it is, 5,000. All right, well, you see, 20 wasn't enough, but it worked. Let's just fix that magic number. Up here, I'm going to have an int, int first batch, and let's make it 40. All right, so now, now everywhere where we have a 20, we're going to say first batch. Might as well just call this elapsed first batch. And then down here as well. It also occurs to me that we don't need this because we're going to flush the buffer at every multiple of 100, including 5,000. So let's get rid of that. Let's try it again. All right, here we go. And that's better. Uh, except that doesn't make sense. Ah, I see a bug. Do 
Did you see that? Let's try that again. These uh, pound if statements, else and end if, these are actually compiler directives. So if you're compiling for iOS, this code is compiled. Otherwise, this code is compiled. And one more time. Okay, well, you know, it's the internet. What can I say? All right, so what did we learn? We learned that you can't use the emulators to connect to a service on your local network using local host. It has to be the public IP address. So that prompted me to publish the server to Azure. Azure doesn't support gRPC, the HTTP2 version, but it does support gRPC Web, which uses HTTP 1.1. So we just had to rewrite the code to use gRPC Web, publish it to Azure, and then we had to rewrite the client code to use gRPC Web as well. All that was done in Program CS in the configuration. Then we had the additional bug in the iOS collection view that we had to work around. And we made it a little bit prettier. So I hope you got as much out of this experience as I did. The good news is gRPC is alive and well in Maui. And this is how you do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.